This week on Tuesday, Donald Trump was indicted in a federal criminal case. I will be breaking down everything for you in this video and answering the question, will Donald Trump go to prison? Let me start off by telling you where I stand. I am not pro-Trump, and I'm not anti-Trump. I am undecided on who to vote for. What I usually do is I wait to see people get up on the debate stage and defend their policies. Then I will decide who to vote for. That is always how I approach elections. In fact, if you have an opinion on who I should vote for, leave it in the comment section down below. I am also not a lawyer, but I do cover a lot of government corruption on this channel, so I know what to look for in this indictment. We are going to go over the background, the prosecutor, the legal standard, the charges, the parties, applicable law, and the evidence. We have to start with the background, because it is strange that this indictment was issued the same week that credible evidence was uncovered by Congress that Joe Biden took $10 million in bribes from Ukraine to sell out the American people. Suddenly, the sitting president is charging his top political rival for the upcoming election. This had better be a solid indictment, or it seems like the weaponization of the Justice Department against political rivals. The lead prosecutor on the case, Jack Smith gave a press conference where he justified these actions by saying, we have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. How can he say that with a straight face? The head of the FBI was being held in contempt of Congress just last week for refusing to turn over evidence against Joe Biden. What about the classified documents found in Joe Biden's garage next to his Corvette? Those classified documents go all the way back to when Joe Biden was a senator. So that means Joe Biden took the documents, somehow hid them in his pants, walked them out of a secure skiff, and then kept them in his house. And no one at the FBI is looking into this? We recently received the Durham report, which proved that the FBI and the DOJ were working behind the scenes illegally for years to attack Republicans and protect Democrats. This seems like an unequal application of justice to me. And what about Hillary Clinton's emails? Hillary Clinton's staff were smashing their phones with hammers to destroy classified emails. The FBI has not charged Hillary Clinton. The FBI has not charged Joe Biden. But now they're charging Donald Trump. Already from this initial press conference by the prosecution, something does not add up. You need to understand that just because the government issues an indictment does not mean it is true. It could be full of lies. They could have just made the whole thing up to get Trump. And I bring this up because we just saw an example of this. Just last week, new evidence was revealed in the trial of one of the January 6 protesters. The protester was being accused of damaging the tarps on the bleachers at the Capitol. Well, it turns out from the body cam footage of the DC Metro police officers that the police officers themselves committed the damage and then blamed it on the protesters. The protesters were being framed. Here is the video. You can see this cop cutting the barrier. This is a video of a crooked cop planting evidence to frame a January 6 protester. You can see it with your own eyes. This cop then gets on the stand in court and lies about it. It was a lie and everyone knew it. All his cop buddies were standing around watching him do it. This is just a fresh example that you cannot necessarily trust these prosecutors are telling you the truth. These people are liars. You just saw an example of it. 
this prosecution against Donald Trump could be just as corrupt. Now, Donald Trump will not be able to talk about any of this background information in the court case, but it does matter because everyone in that courtroom will know the DOJ is applying a double standard when it comes to Trump. When there is such a large public outcry from a case that is so unfair, that can impact the case. So who is this prosecutor, Jack Smith? It turns out he has a history. Do you remember the scandal with John Edwards? Edwards was a front runner in the 2008 Democrat primary for president running against Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. John Edwards had an affair while his wife was dying from cancer. He paid $900,000 from his campaign to the woman. Jack Smith was the prosecutor who charged John Edwards with campaign finance violations. John Edwards, of course, dropped out of the race from the scandal. What he did was horrible, but it was not clear that he actually broke any laws. In fact, the case ended in a mistrial and the DOJ dropped the case. That is strange. Was the case just a political hit job? to smear an opponent to Hillary Clinton? For such a high-profile candidate for president, shouldn't it have been a rock-solid case before indicting someone? That is kind of a strange thing for a prosecutor to do, to frivolously file a weak lawsuit against a candidate for president. It is interesting that this is Jack Smith's history. Now, it would be one thing if it was just one incident, but Jack Smith was the prosecutor on four cases of high-profile politicians. It seems like Jack Smith has a pattern of losing cases. It seems like he is bringing weak cases just to smear the candidates. There was the Bob McDonnell case, who was a potential Republican candidate for president. The case was unanimously overturned by the Supreme Court. There was the Rick Renzi case. Renzi was convicted, but maintains that he was wrongly convicted by a Department of Justice that engaged in witness tampering, illegal wiretapping, and gross prosecutorial misconduct. Renzi was pardoned by Donald Trump. There was the Bob Menendez case. The case ended in a mistrial. So Donald Trump is the fifth example of Jack Smith going after prominent politicians. This had better be the world's strongest indictment, because if Jack Smith does not convict Donald Trump, he should be kicked off the bar. If this case establishes a pattern of bringing weak cases to smear politicians, that is an abuse of power. But it goes further than that. Jack Smith was involved in the Lois Lerner scandal at the IRS. Lois Lerner targeted Tea Party conservatives with audits to interfere with the 2012 election of Obama. Jack Smith was Lois Lerner's counterpart at the DOJ and worked with her on these issues. Why does Jack Smith keep coming up in these scandals? It is still unclear whether Jack Smith was pressuring Lois Lerner to target conservatives, but he was involved during this incident where the government was weaponized against the American people. So we know there is corruption in the DOJ from the Durham report. There is evidence Joe Biden is involved in millions of dollars in bribes from foreign countries, and the prosecutor in this case has a shady history. With all of that, this indictment has got to be for some huge scandal. Wait, what is this? It's about paperwork? This history-making case is about Donald Trump mishandling paperwork. Now, that is a little suspicious if you ask me. Doubt is going to be important in this case. Since this is a criminal case, Jack Smith has a high legal standard he has to meet. He has to prove that Donald Trump is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. 
That means that 12 random people in Florida are going to be chosen to sit on this jury. If there is any reasonable doubt in their mind that Donald Trump is guilty, then they are going to decide that he is innocent and he gets to go free. So we're going to look at the legal documents right now and let us see if there's any doubt in your mind. In this case, there are 37 charges. If Donald Trump receives the maximum penalty, he can be sentenced to 400 years in prison. This is a trick that prosecutors use a lot. They will make a huge list of charges to make things seem worse than they really are. For instance, they say that each document that was mishandled is a separate charge. So charges 1 through 31 are for 31 separate documents. This is really just one charge of mishandling documents that has been repeated 31 separate times. What will probably happen is the judge will reduce this down to only a few charges. Once again, it appears that the DOJ is exaggerating their claims to smear Donald Trump. There are actually two people charged in this complaint, Donald Trump and his aide, Walt Nada. Walt was essentially Donald Trump's secretary. He was allegedly involved in putting documents into boxes or moving boxes, which is what secretaries generally do. He's important for two reasons. One of the charges against Donald Trump is conspiracy, which only applies if two or more people are involved. So, if Walt turns out to not be guilty of conspiracy, then Trump cannot be guilty. So the Department of Justice needs Walt. A tactic that the DOJ sometimes uses is they will charge a low-level employee, like a secretary, and they will pressure that person to flip and testify against their boss. They will give that person a choice. Either they spend years fighting the DOJ and spend millions defending themselves, or they cut a deal and admit to being part of a conspiracy, whether they did it or not. I think they're trying to do this to Walt, because if Walt does not go against Trump, it will be very hard for the DOJ to prove conspiracy. We saw a similar thing happen to Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen was Trump's lawyer. He was arrested and agreed to testify against Trump. He made various accusations about Trump, including hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. It was determined that his statements were not credible. Michael Cohen ended up going to prison for lying under oath and tax fraud. It will be interesting to watch if Walt buckles under pressure and follows the same path as Michael Cohen. I do have to say that what is happening to Walt, I find really disgusting. He's just a secretary. I find it really unlikely that this guy is part of a massive conspiracy. He's doing normal secretary activity, and the DOJ is trying to ruin his life. It is all based on a weak case in order to get Donald Trump. If the DOJ wants to get Trump, go after Trump. Do not go after some random secretary. Walt is a former Navy veteran. He served his country. He served his president. It is sad what is happening to him. And these people are disgusting. In every indictment, they have to list out the laws that apply. You have to tell people what law that they have broken. When I was reading through this document, I was kind of surprised. I was expecting it to talk about the Presidential Records Act, but it never even mentions it. Instead, it alleges that Trump violated the Espionage Act. It claims that Trump was a spy. It also says that Trump was involved in a conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and lying to the FBI. I think this is a big problem with this indictment. 
How can you have a case about the president and classified documents without ever referring to the Presidential Records Act? They never even mention it. Isn't that strange? Obviously, that would be the most relevant law for the situation. The Espionage Act is a bit of a stretch. So the DOJ is ignoring the most obviously related law and then stretching this other law to try to fit the case. That is going to create problems for the DOJ. Trump has claimed many times that he declassified the documents by his authority under the Presidential Records Act. If the records were declassified, there is no case. There's nothing. The entire thing would be thrown out. There is a lot of legal precedent that supports Donald Trump's position under the Presidential Records Act, specifically Bill Clinton's sock drawer case. Bill Clinton kept tape recordings hidden in his sock drawer that he refused to turn over to the archives. Trump is now receiving the exact same type of requests from the archives. In the Clinton case, the judge determined that the Presidential Records Act does not confer any mandatory or even discretional authority on the archivist. Under the statute, this responsibility is left solely to the president. That law seems pretty clear to me. The president is in charge. So why would the DOJ not even mention the Presidential Records Act? Probably because it would throw out their entire case. Donald Trump can decide what is classified and what is not. This whole notion that there is some process that Donald Trump had to go through to request permission from other people to keep personal records, that's silly. That's like the deep state thinking that they somehow have more power than the president. The president is in charge, not the deep state. He does not have to get permission from any of them. Here's what I think is going to happen. Trump's lawyers are going to file a motion with the judge and say the indictment is based off the wrong law and it should fall under the Presidential Records Act. The judge should agree with this. Since the DOJ indictment does not include a single argument that there was any violation of the Presidential Records Act, the entire case would be thrown out. The case would be over before it ever went to trial. It is the DOJ's fault that they did not mention it in the indictment. You cannot charge someone with a crime under the wrong law. But let us assume that the judge somehow agrees with the DOJ and lets the case go to trial under the Espionage Act. Then the DOJ has to prove that Donald Trump is a spy and disclosed sensitive government information. Let us look at the evidence that is in the indictment. What is this? It turns out there is very little evidence that Donald Trump is a spy. A lot of the evidence has to do with Trump's private conversations with his lawyers. This is a big problem for the DOJ. Lawyers are normally covered by attorney-client privilege, and any discussion Trump had with them is in confidence. In this case, Trump's lawyers were forced by a judge to testify in front of a grand jury and disclose their private conversations with Trump. This is only allowed under very rare circumstances. Trump's legal team is arguing that this was done improperly by the DOJ. An improper situation would be if the DOJ did this without mentioning the Presidential Records Act. That would be improper. If this is true, the entire case could be thrown out, or at least the evidence would not be allowed to be used during the trial. If that happens, the DOJ loses most of the evidence in this case. So what other evidence is there besides the protected conversations with the lawyers? The indictment talks about two separate conversations. The first one is a taped interview with a writer. On the tape, Donald Trump shuffles papers around and pulls out what he calls a plan of attack. He says, 
as president, I could have declassified it. Now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. The DOJ claims this is an admission by Trump that he was giving away classified documents. There are a couple of problems with the DOJ's allegations. You can interpret this recording a whole bunch of different ways. The DOJ is interpreting this in the worst possible way that Donald Trump was a spy disclosing sensitive information to a writer. However, he could have just been exaggerating. It would not be out of character for Donald Trump to be using puffery to make himself look more important in front of a writer. How do we know that the document was classified in the first place? He could have showed the writer a random piece of paper. On the tape, Donald Trump used the phrase, a secret, not top secret, not classified, he said, a secret. That could mean anything. If it was actually a classified document, why wouldn't he call it specifically top secret? He didn't. I think it's also telling that the DOJ does not mention that they have the document in question. I bet they don't even have this alleged document. Otherwise, they would have referenced it in the indictment. Now the DOJ has to prove Trump gave away a document they cannot even prove exists. Also, I see no indication that Trump even let the writer read the document. Maybe he just held the document up, but didn't let him actually see it. There are so many ways you can interpret this conversation. I think the DOJ interpretation that Donald Trump is a spy is the least likely explanation. It is also possible that Donald Trump was just making a joke. He happens to be a very funny person. The second incident seems to be a conversation that Trump had with a PAC representative. It is similar to the recording, but there is no corroborating evidence that this conversation ever happened. It could have just been made up. It could be another lie, just like the crooked cop lied in the January 6 trial. So to review so far, if the conversations with the lawyers get thrown out, and the tape-recorded conversation ends up just being Donald Trump telling a joke, and there is no proof the second conversation even happened, what evidence is left? Not much. Then there are the pictures of the boxes. There are boxes everywhere. Boxes everywhere. Look at all these boxes. One of the boxes is tipped over. But I don't think these pictures tell us that there were any crimes committed at all. If you look closely at this photo, there are just newspaper clippings and photos. I'm guessing this is what most of the boxes are. Since the indictment is only talking about 31 documents, what do the boxes have to do with anything? It seems pretty clear to me from these photographs that these are his personal records. The DOJ is implying that Trump was moving the boxes around in a sinister plot to destroy the country. But isn't it more likely that he's just storing his newspaper clippings? That's what I see when I look at these pictures. I don't see espionage. Do you see espionage? If the DOJ is alleging the boxes are not being stored properly, that is a problem for the DOJ, because the boxes were behind a locked door that the FBI agreed to in a previous meeting with Trump's lawyers. This indictment disagrees with their own previous guidance on the boxes. Then there's the obstruction of justice charge. I think this is the hardest charge for DOJ to argue. It's not illegal to have hard negotiations with your lawyers, and there is plenty of correspondence going back and forth between the legal teams. The FBI cannot claim that Donald Trump was not working with them. When the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, it seems like the FBI were the ones acting in bad faith, 
not Donald Trump, I do not see how the DOJ can win any of the obstruction arguments because they were the ones who did not want to work with Trump's lawyers. Remember, this is an accusation that Donald Trump is a spy. If this Florida jury has any reasonable doubt, they're going to declare him innocent. I just tore this indictment apart in 20 minutes, and Trump's lawyers are going to be a lot better than me. I think this jury is going to have a lot of doubt. I want to return back to Walt Nada because I feel so bad for this guy. One of the charges against him is that he allegedly lied to the FBI. The indictment includes a one-page transcript of his interrogation by the FBI. The FBI asks him if he knew about the boxes. He replies, I wish, I wish I could tell you. I don't know. I don't. I honestly just don't know. The FBI alleges this was a lie. This makes him a criminal and he should go to prison. He did know about the boxes, and he said he did not know about the boxes. He was the secretary. He was clearly involved with the boxes. Well, I find this accusation hard to stomach. The transcript is clearly a snippet from a much longer interrogation. What was the context of the question? Were they talking about specific boxes? Maybe he did not know what specific boxes they were talking about. Maybe he did not remember. Maybe he did not know the exact location they were stored. Maybe he was confused. It seems to me to be such a stretch to take this one response from Walt and claim that he was lying to the FBI and involved in a massive conspiracy to commit espionage. He was a secretary. If he did pack boxes or move boxes, he probably had no idea what was inside the boxes. I find the persecution of this poor secretary disgusting. But it gets worse. Walt Nada's lawyer has filed a complaint alleging prosecutorial misconduct by the DOJ. Apparently, the lead DOJ prosecutor, Jay Bratt, came to the lawyer and offered him a bribe. If he would convince Walt to flip and testify against Donald Trump, they would reward him with a cushy job as a federal judge. This is a horrible claim. Prosecutors do not have any control over picking judges, but you know who does? Joe Biden. This means that prosecutors were working with the White House to offer this bribe. There are multiple witnesses of this. The Guardian reported, This incident with Jay Bratt is widely known inside the National Security Division and is being viewed as a problem. If these allegations are true, a judge could throw out the entire case. So what do you think? We have gone through the evidence. Is there any doubt in your mind whether Trump is guilty? Because if you have any significant doubt, you cannot say he is guilty. And I don't know about you, but I have a lot of doubt. I do not see any way how the DOJ wins this case against Donald Trump. It's a weak case. Now, I know that there are all these people going on the news shows and saying that Donald Trump is in trouble and that he is doomed. Those people should be ashamed of themselves. I think they're either idiots or they're working for the deep state to smear Donald Trump. There's just not very much to this indictment. For this case to be legitimate, there would have to be something massive going on. Like, for example, Joe Biden's $10 million bribery scheme. Now that would be massive. The most sinister part of this is that I think the DOJ knows they cannot win this case. It appears to me that they are just doing this to smear Donald Trump and interfere with the election. Just like Jack Smith 
has done to four other politicians before. This will be his fifth politically motivated case. And I think we need to be looking into disbarring Jack Smith for abuse of power. At this point, you might be getting discouraged. There are people in this world that are so evil that they will lie and cheat and they do not care. I think people call these sociopaths and it gets discouraging. How are you supposed to win in life against people who will lie about everything? All they care about is power and abusing the system to keep that power. Well, there is something that you can use against them. The truth. The truth is the most powerful weapon against these people. It is sharper than any sword, and they are terrified of you figuring this out because there is no way they can fight against the truth. If you expose them, what can they do? They cannot argue with the truth. So if you are watching this video, please share this. Share it with a friend. Share it on social media. Tweet it out because the news is not telling the truth about what is going on. Donald Trump's situation reminds me of an old story about someone named Joan of Arc. She was a teenager in France in the 1400s. At the time, France was separated into different factions who were all fighting with England in the 100 Years War. Joan of Arc believed that she was called by God to unite the people of France and push out England. She led armies. She rallied troops. She traveled around France holding massive rallies, and it started to work. The people loved her. Then she was captured. At the time, the court system was managed by the church, but the English had infiltrated the church with people who would be pro-English. The crooked prosecutors and the crooked judges were pro-English, and they wanted to make an example of Joan of Arc. They made fake charges and a fake trial, and they convicted Joan of Arc of heresy. This 19-year-old girl was burned at the stake. Here's what happened next. The country of France united and pushed the English out, winning the 100 years war and changing the course of history forever. Some people might not agree that there is a comparison between Donald Trump and Joan of Arc, but I think it's pretty accurate. We are dealing with corrupt people who want to manipulate the court system to keep themselves in power. Now, hopefully, Donald Trump does not have to actually be burned at the stake. But that does not have to happen this time. All it takes is for people to stand up for the truth. There's a saying that they use in France that goes, Viva la France. It stands for Long Live France. I think we need something similar here. Only this time, it would be Vive. America. Now I want to hear from you. Do you think that Trump will go to prison or do you think he is innocent? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, just wait for the video that is coming next week. I'm Zach from Wolves in Finance. Thank you for watching.